I think one of the things that they're missing is the, the sacred nature of sacrifice, that she is giving something of great value and the Savior is recognizing this sacrifice. You know, whereas the widow only gave two mites and he recognized her, this is someone giving a great deal. And I, I think he's trying to invite them and then each of us by extension, me, to look at, okay, what am I willing to give? What am I willing to sacrifice? He allows her to make this offering in order to teach this principle that sacrifice is profoundly important as we're trying to live the gospel. You'll always have the poor with you, like he tells them, but, but the ability and the opportunity to sacrifice ought to be taken at every turn. Mm -hmm. And to add to, to what you're saying, Brian, which is so good, is that she recognizes who the Savior is. Yeah. King of King, Lord of Lords, high, the great high priest of good things to come. She recognizes who the Savior is. And I think there's an irony in this story. Yeah. You have named apostles and disciples who don't quite get it. Mm -hmm. They're upset about the, yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. But you have an unnamed woman who recognizes who the Savior is. And there's a great promise that comes. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying, Verily I say unto you, whethersoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken for a memorial to her. Now, what I love about this is the, the memorial is not to her name. We're not going to venerate her as an individual, mm -hmm. but we are going to venerate her acts. And I can't think of how many times in my life I can remember an act that somebody did for me, but maybe not who did it. And so the action is what is being memorialized. And I love how you said that, Brian, that the sacrifice is being memorialized more so than the person.